Hi, my name's Hal. In this video, I want to dive into Deutsch Yoza's algorithm, or Deutsch's algorithm for short. Deutsch's algorithm is an algorithm that was invented by David Deutsch in 1985. It was the first quantum algorithm, and it showed that it was possible to achieve an exponential speed up compared to the best classical algorithm for a problem. In this video, I want to dive into the theory behind Deutsch's algorithm to try to understand how it achieves this exponential speed up. If you're more interested in an actual implementation of Deutsch's algorithm on a quantum computer, check out this video here, where we walk through my implementation of Deutsch's algorithm in Q Sharp, Microsoft's quantum programming language. So what is Deutsch's algorithm? Well, Deutsch's algorithm is an algorithm for determining whether some unknown binary function is something called constant or balanced. So Deutsch's algorithm is an algorithm for determining whether an unknown binary function is constant or balanced. Uh, let's imagine we have some function f of x. Uh, we know a couple things about it. First, we know that x is going to be a binary string of length n. We also know that f of x is going to be returning a single bit, either a 0 or a 1. With this in mind, we can imagine f as sort of being a black box, where we're feeding binary numbers into it and getting a single bit out of it. In the case of Deutsch's algorithm, we know that f is either going to be constant or balanced. A constant function is one which always returns the same value, either a 0 or a 1, while a balanced function is one which will return a 0 for half of the values in, of the possible inputs and a 1 for the other half of the values. So let's think about solving this on a classical computer. Uh, we know that there are going to be 2 to the n possible inputs, and if we want to determine whether the function is constant or balanced, we're going to need to check more than half of the possible input space. So in order to solve this on a classical computer, we're going to need to make 2 to the n over 2 plus 1 queries, 2f. Uh, in big O notation, we represent this as 2 to the n. This means that this is an exponential time function, and as we increase n, um, the amount of times we're going to have to query f is going to grow exponentially. On a quantum computer, though, Deutsch's algorithm allows us to do this in linear time. More specifically, O of one time, meaning regardless of the size of our input string x, we always have to make just one query to f to determine whether it is constant or balanced. For now, I want to consider the one-bit case in order to simplify the explanation of Deutsch's algorithm. So now we're dealing with a function f, which takes as an argument a single bit and is going to return a single bit. Uh, we're still just concerned with whether this f is constant or balanced. So now let's consider what kind of f's can there be? There's actually only four possible functions that f could be. f could be the identity function, that is that f just returns x. So if we put in a zero, we get a zero. We put in a one, we get a one. It could also be the negation operation, just like a not gate, which takes a 0 to a 1 and a 1 to a 0. Um, and these are going to form our two possible balanced functions. Then there are two possible constant functions as well. These are constant 0 and constant 1s. Uh, they just kind of do what they sound like. Uh, f of x, if it's constant 0, is always going to return 0. And if it's constant 1, is always going to return 1. So these form our two possible constant functions. So now how, how can we actually implement this on a quantum computer? Well, our goal here is to create an f that takes some arbitrary state psi and returns the result of applying f to that state psi. However, we have a problem with this diagram here. If you remember from my previous lecture, which I'll put a link to in the description, um, quantum operations, by their very nature, have to be reversible. Uh, as it is right here, though, this operation would not necessarily be reversible. For example, if f was constant 0, the output of f would in no way allow us to calculate the input state psi. This is a common issue in quantum computing, um, and luckily there's a pretty easy workaround. We just use what are called ancilla qubits. So we reformulate our f as this, where we have an input qubit in the state 0 that is going to have the result of applying f to the state psi mapped onto it, and then we will also just return the state psi. This way, our operation is always going to be reversible and can now be implemented on a quantum computer. So how do we implement those four operations we just talked about with this kind of circuit model? Well, the constant zero operation is pretty straightforward. 
all it does is map zero to zero so you do nothing you just let the qubits go through it uh, constant one is pretty similar you just apply an x gate to the zero so then it becomes a one now you're always going to return a one um, the identity is a little more complicated we use a controlled not gate where the control qubit is our input state and it controls the not operation on our output qubit you're probably looking at this and thinking that we've managed to clone the state psi however as I've discussed in my previous lecture, um, it's not possible to clone some arbitrary quantum state. The reason this works is because right now we are only concerned with the two cases where psi is, a, is either in the zero state or the one state, because right now we are just trying to emulate the behavior of the classical oracle. So once we have identity, um, negation is pretty simple. We just throw another X gate in there. And now we've managed to implement all four of these quantum oracles. So how do we actually use Deutsch's algorithm to determine whether our F is constant or balanced? It's actually a pretty simple circuit. All we do is this. We prepare our two qubits in the zero state, we apply an X gate to each of them to put them in that one, the one state, then a Hadamard to put them into the minus state, we pass them through our F and we apply another Hadamard. And then all we do is perform measurement. And depending on the result of our measurement, we will know if it's constant or balanced. If we measure a 1, 1, it's going to be constant. If we measure a 0, 1, it will be balanced. So in only one query, we've managed to determine whether f is constant or balanced. I hope you've enjoyed this explanation of Deutsch's algorithm. Um, and you're probably wondering, what uses are there for determining whether a function is constant or balanced? Uh, unfortunately, the answer is there is none. Um, Deutsch is a very contrived example. Uh, I think does a great job at illustrating why quantum computers are so interesting. Because I mean, the algorithm I just explained allows you to do something that you cannot do on a classical computer. So clearly there's something interesting in quantum computation, even if this example is useless. I think even though Deutsch's algorithm is a pretty simple quantum circuit, it can often be difficult to understand why it works. Um, to provide a little bit of intuition about it, you can think about the difference between the constant and balanced functions that we analyzed. The balanced functions all contained a controlled not operation, which when you put these qubits into superposition state becomes an entangling operation. So in the end, what we're doing is determining whether this function that we've been given is an entangling or not an entangling operation. Uh, if you want a great graphical explanation of what's going on in Deutsch's algorithm, I'm going to put a link in the description to a video by Microsoft, which goes over Deutsch's algorithm and a couple of other quantum computing concepts, and does an amazing job of illustrating what is actually happening to the qubit states as they pass through the unknown f function, and then demonstrates how this allows us to perform Deutsch's algorithm. Deutsch's algorithm does a great job at illustrating a common thing that we do in quantum computation. Um, it can almost feel like we're cheating with Deutsch's algorithm when we take this classical function that we define and then reformulate it in this quantum way. Uh, and in a way we are cheating. I remember when I was first learning about quantum algorithms, uh, it felt like this was kind of not a representative of the same problem. Well, there's two things that are important to think about here. First of all, our solution is identical. So in that way, we've still solved our original problem and that this reformulation is only possible on a quantum computer. In fact, this is how a lot of quantum algorithms work. Uh, a really famous quantum algorithm, Grover's algorithm, which allows you to search databases faster on a quantum computer, um, relies on the same sort of principle where you reformulate the database in a quantum computing way that allows you to access and reach from it faster. Keep an eye out for a video I'll be releasing soon on Grover's algorithm. Again, if you're interested in how you would actually implement Deutsch's algorithm on a quantum computer, check out this video here where I implement Deutsch's algorithm using Q Sharp. Thank you all so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll try and answer.